Um, I got a confession to make. I'm not white. I'm not black. Oftentimes, I'm not Latin enough for any Latin girl I'm trying to kick it to. My salsa isn't good enough. But white chicks love my salsa. Like, for real. So where's that leave me? From the outside, I'm a kid with a big nose, curly hair, with no beard. I can be Jewish, Israeli to be exact. With a beard, people often ask me if I'm Middle Eastern. I tell them, nope, I'm Latin. They say, oh, cool, cool, cool. Where you from? I say, New York. They go, oh, you're Puerto Rican. I go, no, I'm Dominican. They say, oh, that's cool. I know some Dominicans. That's cool. I know some white people. <laughs> We're even. I've had a handful of women tell me, ooh, I like Latins. They're lovers, not fighters, which one, is historically inaccurate. <laughs> and two, bitch, you don't know me. <laughs> According to Hollywood, I'm ethnically ambiguous. This means I'm lucky. I'm lucky because I cannot be identified. I'm lucky because I'm not that dark. I'm lucky because I'm not that light. I'm lucky because I have flavor, but not too much. You see, they try to label me by not labeling me. When we meet someone, we place them somewhere in something. We have to. We've all done it. We all play the game of, hey, how do I fit in? It's science. All of us. We instantly make three judgments. No talking needed. All of the time, three judgments in a fraction of a second. Age, race, gender. Regardless of how granola and new age you are, you do it. You've done it. And we, you will con continue to do it. I can't simply free myself from what you think of me. I must also free myself from what I think of you. Dubois calls it the double consciousness. The lens at which we look at ourselves through the lens of other people, the only way out of it is to go through it. I remember as a child being sad, wondering why I won't ever be able to be in those Pride and Prejudice films, more specifically Gosford Park, why no one British looked like me. It wasn't fair. My British accent was on point. And I loved the clothes. I loved it all. Acting said I could be anything, so what's the deal? It's why I found the stage. I've been a romantic, a gardener, a wolf, a child, a vaudevillian star, a French poet, a soldier, a junkie, and Ben Affleck is playing Latin guys named Tony Mendez. <laughs> what really makes us who we are. I read Spider-Man comics as a kid. I'm really bad at baseball, much to my father's dislike. I've had kick-ass white people health insurance and poor Medi-Cal insurance. I did deserve to be followed in certain CVSs because I was stealing. I love smooth jazz and R&B. I'm a fan of the classics. I want to be an X-Men and the first Latino James Bond. Bond, Javi Bond. <laughs> it gets better, Bondissimo. <laughs> I digress. With my fellow Latinas, I'm too white. Black girls, I'm not too white, but not too ethnic. With white girls, I'm just ethnic and edgy enough. I can be street and proper when need be. I'm just before you start mainlining a little sniff. I won't offend daddy too much. Once I dated a woman who thought I was Puerto Rican for six months, six months because it's all the same at the end of the day, right? So when I met her parents, they asked me what PR was like and if I still had family there. That was awkward. Once I went over to this girl's house in high school for dinner and her father opened the door and said, huh, sorry, tonight's not taco night and then closed the door in my face. He opened it back up, just joking. I stayed for dinner and a woman was lying on top of me when she asked me if I spoke Mexican. I wanted to inform her that it was Spanish Mexican is not a language, but I preferred having her naked and thinking whatever she wanted. <laughs> I spent a lot of time giving into someone else's story, taking part in telling someone else's story. I've assigned and been assigned parts and roles. Sometimes I believed it for a while, I believed it. I started being a chameleon the first day I looked in a mirror and I wondered why I didn't look like those I admired and if I ever really liked who I was. My large nose and tight, thick curls that no amount of gel or pomade could keep straight. Nothing could stop or hide my roots. In the meantime, I would disguise myself. In his walk, his laugh, the thing he did with his hair, the way he winked at her, the thing he just said, but it never worked because regardless of my ambiguity, I could never hide my darkness. I've been pulled out of a car multiple times late at night to run through test after test to see if I was drunk. I wasn't. Yes, that could have happened to anyone. But in 2014, 12,000 men under the age of 30 were arrested in New York City. 10,600 were Hispanic or black. That's real numbers. And still, I too have a certain sort of privilege. If I don't take it too far, if I find the right balance of flavor and taste and color, I too can excite the blandest of tongues without being off-putting. And in the back of my mind, I always know if I get too much sun, it could be a problem. 
and I don't mean skin cancer. I went to school on the Upper East Side and I felt okay. I hung out with my best friend in the slums of the Bronx and I was chilling. I lived among wealthy Jews and went to 24 bar mitzvahs and Baruch Hata, it was all okay. <laughs> Whose world is this and where do I fit in? Will I one day wake up and wonder who I was and who I did it for, was it ever real? In my blood is a culture that hates the darker side of the island. Tell a Dominican that they are black and they will likely spit on you. No soy un mono. My grandmother scolded my father for letting me date a black girl. My dark, dark grandmother and all Dominicans like her and me are 90% African fact. My sister spent summers in DR, I never did. By the time it came to raise me, my parents had run from returning to where they come from and into the grasp of what they could possibly be if they played the game, a game that has existed since the beginning of time. My pops would take me out of school and we wouldn't tell my moms. We would grab some pizza, we would sit at the entrance of a park and we would watch people for hours. We would play, where are they going? Where are they coming from and why do they walk that way? <sighs> my pops was so good at this. His first lesson to me was, shoes make the man. People will judge you by your shoes, so play the part and play the part we did. Like that Italian guy who played the lead Cuban character in Mambo Kings. Whether conscious or subconscious, we both played someone's part. My father has very little family who still speak to him because when he made the commitment to give his wife and kids everything he never had, he chose for them not to worry or suffer. His fellow Dominican brethren said, Oye, chico, you trying to be white now? What does that mean, trying to be white? When I think about it, being white is simply a comment on power. Well, this is the world we live in. We're just trying to get as much of it as possible because we are the flavor filled in a dull America, the ones with hips, the exotic, the just enough to slip under, to take over and have a great time while we're at it. So yes to master, you got it mama. Whatever you say, negra, I will be whatever you need me to be. You remind me of Lin-Manuel Miranda. I hear this a lot. I'd like to one day remind you of me. I wanna be me, not a version of me, a version of some Latin something that did it. I want Latin people to play Latin people. And for the record, by saying race doesn't matter, we're asserting that I have nothing to say, nothing to add, that cultural perspective is irrelevant. I am partially responsible for perpetuating the situation by happily imitating the dominant style without finding a way to challenge it. Yes, we sometimes bleach or darken our skin to fit in. I now say I speak three tongues. I'm trilingual. I can help you diversify your consumer market with what's good, fam? Oye, guapo, que pasa? Hello, how are you? It's a struggle. I want to fight the group you say I belong to and I also want to belong. I also want to not fight. I also don't want to perpetuate the differences. I also want to never rob or underappreciate the value of these differences. I don't know that this mysterious hole even exists. This place we've never seen where we're all one, the garden, heaven on earth, that perfect utopia. They've done these tests that say, let's donate to these groups of people who are suffering. And then they say, let's donate to the person who is suffering. And the person got the larger donation 90% of the time. I know that many orchestras audition behind a scrim and I love this. So as not to make judgments because we will make judgments based on anything but the song that matters. So I invite you, even in our differences, let us speak about individuals then and not groups. Let us hear the song. Let us let go so we may be free. The book of who we are is not a fixed text. To truly exist in that mysterious whole, we must focus on what binds us. Beyond flesh, beyond hair, deeper than what we can see is who we are. Loving gods in human form. We share love, we share suffering, we share heartbreak, we share rising, we share such truths. Yes, there are days where I fall within the cracks and I sometimes wonder where I belong, but I can remind myself, I belong here with you and with you and with all of you you who are me and me who is you, thank you.